Hey guys, how's it going? It's a gorgeous day out. It's not very sunny, but it's warm. It's like high 40s and it's beautiful. I'm getting ready to start some seeds and transplant some seedlings already. So you might remember the winter sowing video. I'm trying out the whole winter sowing method. I've got a bunch of seeds in water jugs in front of our greenhouse um, just kind of sitting there right now I looked in all of them today and there's no action yet um, but I had pre-soaked the entire package of sweet peas when I did that project and you can only fit so many seeds in a water jug so I had a whole bunch left over so I decided just to pop them in some soil under a grow light inside just to kind of gauge the difference and just try and experiment I mean we're not even February yet and I'm already having to transplant these so I don't really know how this is gonna go. It could be awesome and we could have sweet peas really early or who knows. Here's a little close up. They look really good. I mean, they're beautiful, lots of leaves, lots of sets, but you can see that they need some support. I mean, they're just like wanting to go all over the place. Uh, and while I think they could live in these little containers for a while, there's quite a room, a lot of room for root growth. Eventually these are gonna be a really big tangled mess and I wanna get them transplanted while they're easy to work with. So I am gonna pop these up here in a second, but I wanna get some other seeds started first. So I've got two different kinds today we're gonna to start, both of which are for my cut flower garden. And I have some other seeds started already. I have some white glitter Eryngium, which is a sea holly, and I've got about half of those seeds are up right now. And then I started some uh, foxglove. There's cafe cream and pink gin. Uh, but the thing with those foxglove is that they bloom the second year after you plant them. So this year I'm just gonna get leaf growth, I'm not gonna get any blooms. So I went ahead and ordered the uh, Camelot mix. These bloom the first year you plant them. So I thought this would be really fun to kind of bridge the gap while we're waiting for the other ones to bloom. And then the Magic Fountains Cherry Blossom Delphiniums is the other one we're gonna start. The delphiniums, it says on the packet to start them 10 to 16 weeks before transplant and the foxglove is 10 to 12 weeks. So I really need to get those going. And as far as any kind of special instructions, the foxglove need to have light in order to germinate. So we're not gonna cover those seeds, but we will be covering the seeds on the delphiniums just very, very lightly. It's a really small seed. Um, and anyway, let me show you the other stuff I'm gonna use. I've got my potting tray here, which is super handy and very well loved, as you can see. And then this is what I'm using to start most of my seeds because they fit my grow lights really nicely. These are from uh, Gardener Supply and they're the seed starter kit. So let me explain this quick. And I've showed these to you in a video before. They're a self-watering seed starting tray and we're gonna be starting so many tr uh, seeds that I kinda need any extra help I can get. So what there is, is there's this little platform right here that goes into the bottom of the tray that holds moisture. Uh, we're going to pre-moisten this right here and this is our wicking mat and that goes over the tray and then it folds under on this side. Then we'll be putting our pre-moistened seed starter mix, which I already did. Look at that, so efficient. Already pre-moistened. Pre that will fill the containers and then we will seed everything and then it also comes with the dome. There we go, so that's what my setup will look like in the end, but I'm going to take this out individually to fill it with soil and that's what we're gonna do first. This is how it looks when you get it. I like to pat the soil down a little bit just to eliminate any big air pockets. I don't compact it really hard, but that way I can add a little bit of extra soil and it won't settle when I water. That's what they look like. Am I way over prepared? I have enough to start another seed tray, it looks like. But you do wanna make sure that you use a specific seed starting potting mix, not just regular potting mix or garden soil, because those two types of soil are just way too heavy. Um, and this one helps, like it's just lighter and loftier and roots are able to grow a little bit better. Um, and it's just the right formulation of nutrients for your seedlings, it's not too hot. All right, so let's take a look at the foxglove seeds first, because it looks like they come in a vial. Oh man. Little itty bitty seeds. So I'm gonna try to make sure that two of these end up in each one of the cells. I'm 
God bless the people who pelletize their seed. Makes it much easier to work with. All right, foxgloves are done. Now delphiniums. Okay, there's your delphinium seeds. I'm just gonna make a slight depression in every one of these cells for the seeds. We're just gonna barely cover them. There's actually two other seeds I started upstairs. The first is Lysianthus, which I've seen absolutely zero action on so far. I mean, I had my phone flashlight on last night and I was as close as I could get to the soil trying to see if there was anything going on and there's nothing. I, I don't remember how many days I've had them in the ground. It might take a little while for them to germinate. So I'm gonna double check that. And then I also planted four little cups of green globe artichoke, which are all beautiful and they've all sprouted in their huge seedlings. Like they don't have their true leaves yet, but they're, they're pretty good size. So I'll show you those when we go upstairs. Now, ideally you would have labeled your flats before you planted your seeds, um, because that way you won't get confused or get them mixed up. But in this case, since I was just doing two different varieties and one of them's pelletized and bright yellow, the foxglove, I'll be able to identify them when I get them upstairs and we can label them here in just a few minutes but they're done. I mean, the reason why you pre-moisten your soil is so that you don't have any soil settling after you've planted them and you water them in, you don't have any air pockets in there and it doesn't dislodge the seed when you water because dry soil, it just kind of puffs all over the place and it's really difficult to keep things in the place you put them. So that's why you do that. And it just helps because everything is kind of like pre-moistened and pre, it keeps them, I don't know, it's easier to water from this point on if you do that step. Um, and then you do want to cover them with a dome, like in the foxgloves case, they need light to germinate. So I'm going to go ahead and put them on, um, put them underneath a light that's on. Uh, delphiniums do not need light to germinate, but I'm just gonna set them right next to the foxglove and once they come up, the light will be on and ready for them. Um, so anyway, I think at this point, what I need to do is go up, get them upstairs and then we can set up the whole self-watering tray thing. I'm gonna water them in first real quick so I don't have any seeds flying anywhere when I'm carrying them around. Okay, so they're underneath the grow light. We've got them tagged properly with a little label and I'm just gonna be monitoring them daily. I'm only gonna top water for now until they've sprouted. And once they've sprouted, I will set up the bottom area, which is just pre-moistening that wick mat and then filling the reservoir with water. And that's all there is to that. It's really easy to set up. Um, so I just come up here in the morning and at night uh, for all my seedlings, I take a look at them because you can't let them dry out. Once you've got those seeds moist, it's just really essential that you keep them moist until you see them sprout. Um, and then after that, once the whole flat is up, we'll take the domes off and I've got a fan in here. I just turned off so that you could hear me. Um, we've got a, a fan on low and that will provide a little bit of wind, which will make the seedlings a little bit stronger. So let me show you the other things I have in here. First off, the green globe artichokes. Look at that. 
I should thin these now and leave the strongest looking one there. This pot one came up, that pot one came up, and then the other two, three came up total. I think there's three in this one too. Super excited about these. I just, I don't even care if they bloom. Like they may not bloom this year. I might have to keep them in containers and put them in the cold frame for the winter. And then they'll bloom the second year, but I just like the structure of the leaves so much. Look at the diamond frost euphorbia. I cut all of these back and brought them in. Look at them. So here are the other flats. This first one is of the foxglove. The front half is pink gin and cafe cream on the back half and all but one cell of each of these came up. So this one didn't have anything and that one didn't have anything. But there's some really nice seedlings in the rest of these cells. I got a little heavy handed. And I kind of think like maybe I accidentally seeded extra in this cell instead of seeding them in that cell. I don't know, that happens sometimes. But you can see I have the dome off of these and we have that low fan usually running in here to keep them strong and so we have some really nice strong seedlings. This next flat is the white glitter Eryngium. See the tag right there. And about 13 cells out of 24 are up. And this is what happened to me last year with the Eryngium. Uh, so I'm just gonna give them some time because they're still really small and I might still see some new ones yet. And then this is my flat of Lysianthus. Silent Springs, nothing. I did check back. I planted them 12 days ago and it says 10 to 15 days for germination. So I just need to be patient. And we'll just hope that there's still going to be some activity in there. Okay, so seeds are planted and they're all cozy in the plant room under their grow light. So now we will get the sweet peas planted. I'm gonna head to the barn first because I've got to grab a couple of containers um, and both of my obelisks, hold on. One of my, I had one obelisk out in the greenhouse and one of them I think is right over here in a flower bed. Let me show you. I think with the size that these sweet peas get, this little trellis will be perfect in a container and they're supposed to bloom spring through summer. So if they do really well, then I can just underplant them with some other really pretty annual. Oh, this is such a different landscape in the winter. Looks tidy though right now. Nice. Hey girls, how's it going in there? Hi. You're very cute. Up my containers and my topiary form so now I'm just going to try to split up the sweet peas as evenly as possible. Ideally I would have this soil in the greenhouse for a day or two so it could warm up a little bit but it's really not it's not that cold so I think we'll be okay. give you a close-up look at this one right here. This is a really nice looking seedling. It actually created a little bit of a root ball and you can see the roots coming out the bottom right there. Look at this first one. Isn't that awesome? 
So the bottom of this form has eight spikes and I had seven seedlings per container. So the last one I just kind of put in between the last two, but they should fill in beautifully. So happy with how these turned out I just hope the seedlings aren't too mad at me for transplanting them and putting them kind of outside all of a sudden I mean I've been putting them in the Sun porch during the day for the past like three days um, so they're at least used to being out there during the day but it does stay quite warm and I do have a floor heater in there um, so it takes the edge off at night I am gonna go grab some harvest guard from the barn in fact let's go do that now and that's just a really um, light um, white colored fabric that protects crops from really intense temperatures and that sort of thing so I think like maybe creating a little cozy environment for them for the next few nights might be kind of nice that's what it is let me give you a close-up of this second container I planted before I put the harvest guard on they look really good this one had a couple of seedlings that were a little smaller like the other container only had one this one has three small ones but that actually might be better so we'll see Could these scissors be any more rusty than this? Jeez. Gonna look like I've got a couple ghosts up in the sun porch. I'm gonna need a couple saucers. Oh, I've got two, you gotta be kidding me. Yay. <laughs> look at those. Oh, the lengths we go to have pretty flowers. So there they are. They fit perfectly in there. I'm actually really surprised. Now those pots are gonna need a little bit of attention once I actually put them outside. They're looking a little rough, but that's okay. We'll put some stain on them later. So I do have this floor heater in here. It kicks on only when it gets really cold, so it just takes the edge off the heat, but it does stay fairly cool in here. And I'm thinking because the citrus and the eugenias and ferns are doing okay, I mean, even when it got nine degrees, they did okay in here. I'm thinking the sweet peas should be okay, especially because they have harvest guard on them, which I'll only leave on there for maybe like, I don't know, five to seven days or so, just to let them acclimate. They should be okay. So my plan for this room is actually to be the interim room for my seedlings, because I've got kind of a good stair step system to get them outside. Um, so they'll go from inside to the sun porch, which is warmer than our greenhouse, then they'll go out to the greenhouse and then they can go outside. Uh, it's just perfect in here. I mean, we've got the locust tree right here, but in the wintertime it doesn't have leaves, so a lot of light comes in here all throughout the entire day when it's sunny out. It's overcast today. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to move the chaise lounge out for a little while, which to be completely honest with you, this chaise lounge is completely impractical for this space because only one person can comfortably come in here, which I've used it a few times, but I like to hang out with family and stuff. I don't really do a lot just on my own. So I would love to get some really pretty little bistro set, either a two person or a four person uh, round kind of table where more people can utilize this space. But in the meantime, I'm going to just take the chaise out to the barn, I think, and cover it, and then put up some temporary shelving so I can put some seedlings in here. The heater just kicked on because I have the doors open. Anyway, I will try to keep you guys as updated as possible on how everything goes. In fact. I usually put a lot of stuff in my Instagram stories um, if I've got an update to do or I'll take a picture of it and post it on Instagram or Facebook. So if you aren't following us there, maybe um, think about doing that because you may see some more timely updates and that way, like sometimes I forget to put them in videos. 
Uh, it just happens because we have a lot of different projects going on. So anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to know what seeds you're starting right now. So leave me a comment down below and let me know what your plans are. See you guys in the next video. Bye.